Hey guys, today we're going to weather a model using Tempera. Uh, Tempera is a, uh, Tempera, I don't know how you say it, but it's a water-based paint that is uh, washable when dry. It's very inexpensive, and I feel like it's been mostly passed over by the modeling community. Uh, I tried it on a whim, and I really like the results that I had. <clears throat> so we're working on a ZIL-131, and uh, this model has been in my stash for quite a while. And I was looking for inspiration, and I came across some photos of like huge graveyards of these things just abandoned <clears throat> in old military bases. So we're going to do an abandoned truck today. Um, I've already done a lot of the uh, the rusting with regular Vallejo acrylics. But we're going to do some streaking rust using tempera, and then we're going to do some other weathering effects as well. Uh, I'm going to show you an example of each technique and then uh, you can apply it to your model. I've already mixed up a rust streaking color. With the tempera, just, it's, you know, yellow, red, and brown. We're gonna start with this window right here. So one of the cons with tempera is that it's not very pigmented, it's, it's kinda, it's not very opaque. <clears throat> so you have to lay it on pretty thick at first. Alright, we're going to let this dry and I'll show you how to work it in streaks. Alright, y'all ready to do some streaking? Uh, it's dried. And let me just show you what it looks like when it's dry. This stuff dries super matte. And for weathering, I mean, for the most part, I think that's great. Um, I also removed some of the lines. It was just a little too heavy. But uh, all you need is just water. Just plain water. Nothing fancy. We're going to wet the brush. And for a lot of you, this is going to be really familiar. Because it's pretty similar to working with enamels. Um, so your brush, you don't want it soaked, just damp. Let me go ahead and start cleaning it up. Actually, I had too much water on there, but that's all right. Just cleaning up the top. Now we're actually going to refine the streaks. You can always paint, you know, just regular acrylic. You can paint the streaks. But I don't know. For me, on the scale, it just kind of looks too sharp. Just going over the sides and the top lightly. Just pulling it down. And I'm sure you guys can do a better job than I'm doing right now. The camera always makes it difficult. I'm not really set up to be a YouTuber. It's just something I enjoy. Hopefully it helps some people every now and then. If you're having trouble getting it off, <clears throat> like if it's just stubborn, you can take a, uh, you know, just a ruined brush with uh, short, stiff bristles and scrub it. Or you can use a cotton swab. Just probably blend this in a little bit more too. Alright, so that's just an example of some rust streaks. And I'm going to go and uh, go around and do the rest of the model as well. 
but we're going to move on to the next step. And if you've ever seen an abandoned vehicle, especially under trees in the woods, it has this uh, kind of patchy black mildew. And uh, so that's what I'm going to show you next. All right, so I've done the streaking. And uh, the camera, for whatever reason, is actually picking this up way more. Uh, it it's way more pronounced on camera than it is in real life. Uh, but it's not anywhere near as bright as it's appearing on camera. Anyways, I've also done some pulling, which is essentially I just did a wash and broke up the edges with water. And uh, some drip lines there, which was just the rust streaking color. And I went over it with a dark brown and just kind of blended them together. But now we're going to move on to the mildew, and I'm going to add a photo of what I'm talking about just so you can uh, see it. It's a photo of my work truck. It's a bad photo. I apologize. So we're going to take some black tempera paint. Oh, too much. Sorry, though. You get a ton of this stuff for pretty cheap. And uh, for the mildew, we're actually going to do sponge chipping, essentially. This mildew, it tends to accumulate on the bottoms and the horizontal surfaces. Went a little heavy on the corner there, but that's all right. We can clean it off with water. And you'll also see this mildew on places that are going to condensate a lot quicker, like doors. All right. And so with this mildew, what you'll also see is you'll see rain marks, essentially, where the, the water has washed it away. And now we're going to add those streaks. And again, since we're working with tempera, all we need is water and a brush or a Q-tip. So I'm going to use a flat brush. Try and follow the rust streaks that you've already put down.
All right, so there's your black mildew. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it on the rest of the model and show you how it looks when it's done. All right, our truck is all mildewy now. Next, we're gonna move on to the windows. And for the windows, we're going to try and replicate algae. Uh, it really likes to grow on glass that uh, isn't cleaned often. <clears throat> so I've got a algae-like color mixed up. And we're going to essentially do the same thing as the mildew. And we're just going to use a sponge to uh, basically, you know, sponge tip it on there. And then create some rain streaks. All right, same deal. Water. I just want to clean up the edges first. And we're going to do some streaks. All right, I'm going to finish the rest and be back. And here we have the finished product. After I did the big work with the brush, I took a toothpick and scraped some of the paint off to rep reproduce some finer lines. I think that turned out really well. Alright, so next we're going to do some, I don't know if I'd call it dust. Like a crusty, built-up dirt on top. And I've already just kind of dabbed some on the top, as you can see. And now I'm just going to blend it in. And here we have the final result. All right, next thing we're going to do, I've added some black to the dust just to darken it. And I've watered it down. And we're going to do, I'm not going to say wash, because that's the, one of the main cons of this paint is that it does not make a good wash. It doesn't flow. Wherever you set it, it's going to stay. So we're just kind of, we're going to smear it on. All right, you know the routine. I'm going to wait for it to dry, and I'll be right back. All right. This time, I'm going to use a cotton swab to clean it up.
So now we're going to move on to some dried mud. Uh, for the most part, when mil military vehicles are parked, they go through a wash rack beforehand. But we're going to assume that, I don't know, maybe these guys left in a hurry or something. So first I'm going to do some splatters just on, on, on the underside where years of rain wouldn't have washed it away. And I'll show you how I mix it. This is just plain, plain plaster of Paris. You can get it at a hardware store. All right, so this is another technique that most of you are going to be familiar with. It's more about showing the effects you can get with uh, tempera. I'm just going to flick it off a brush. Mine's a little thick. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Again, you don't have to worry about the stray drops getting on top of the model. You just wash it off with water. All right, I'm going to water it down, and I mean, it's a speculating technique. You guys know what this is. I'm going to water this down a little bit more and uh, go ahead and finish the model and let you see how it looks when it's dry. Here's the finished product. And of course, you can work that make it look however you want. I added some uh, black paint to it just to give some variation in the color. But there we go. So the last thing I'm going to show you today is I'm going to do a thick mud paste to work into the treads of the tires. And uh, it's pretty much the same thing as the, the speckling. But we're going to add one more thing and that's tile grout. This is another thing that you can get very cheaply from a hardware store. And it gives a much rougher texture to the finished product. Cool thing about this tile grout, it's available in a bunch of different colors. And you can almost, I'm not going to say you can use it as pigment powder it's way too coarse but if you want to build up texture quick this stuff works really well and you don't have to do that much as far as color to uh, change it now I want this stuff to be pretty thick so I won't add any water Keep in mind how this this stuff lightens a lot when it dries, especially with the plaster in there. So there we go. Very thick. So something like that, just kind of force it into the threads. And then uh, we're going to let it dry, and I'll show you how to clean them up. All right, our tires are dry now, and I'll show you how I clean it up. And that's just going to be another cotton swab and some water. I suppose you could use a brush, but if you use a brush, make sure it's one you don't care about, because the grit uh, will absolutely destroy them. Alright, once you got your treads cleaned up, you'll end up with something that looks like this. It's 
So that's it. Um, I'm going to go over some pros and cons. Tempera. Very cheap. Um, it's, you, it's very available. Where, you know, enamel products are, you can't just run to the local hobby shop anymore. Which, that's just modernity. And boy, do I have some things to say about that. But I won't because you're here for a modeling video. Um, it's very forgiving as far as mistakes. It's very easy to clean up. And then, uh, you know, cons. It can't fully replace enamel. You, you can't use this for like a panel line wash. And uh, it's just, it's not going to work great for certain applications. But I think for most applications, you can get away with it. And it's a little harder to work with on the model. So it, it takes a little more time and it takes a little more work getting the effects to look the way you want them to. So I think overall it's, a, it's, it's good, but it's not a total replacement. I think you can do some really cool things with it. But I'll get this model put together and I'll show you how it looks. I'm going to just take some pictures and uh, show you what it looks like all put together. I'm also going to post a picture of the uh, the very first model I did with Tempera. I'm just showing us some dust effects. So guys, I really appreciate you watching. I hope this helps. Have a good day.